Hi, I'm Maureen Paraventi, editor of Workplace Material Handling and Safety. Welcome to a thought leadership interview with Scott DeBow. Scott is the principal advisor of health, safety, and environmental for Aveda. Aveda is the industry's largest supply chain risk management platform, and we're going to call that SCRM going forward. An SCRM helps companies create safe operating environments for their employees, suppliers, and contractors. So welcome, Scott. Thank you so much, Maureen. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. Happy to talk to you. Uh, First, let's get down to basics. What exactly is an SCRM and why is one necessary? What, in fact, is the downside of not using one? Sure. So great question. And and I like how you already broke down the initials. So SCRM, it may not be something we read or came across five years ago, or maybe even three years ago. But um, sometimes it's easier to think of or to start with a definition of, of what it is uh, to give a little bit of context for the, the environments we, we practice it in. And so um, we think of supply chain risk management as simply the, the implementation of the strategies and communications that promote the continual assessment of risk, monitoring and management of risks throughout the supply chain, across the supply chain, more than just qualifying at the beginning of a job, but managing risks all across the entire uh, scope of where work takes place. And so it helps us uh, anticipate change to reduce vulnerability um, and ensure continuity of care. So one of the things we hear with risk, sometimes even if you look up the definition of risk, you see it's equated with uncertainty, what we're striving to achieve in better supply chain risk management is to help manage uncertainty along the network or chain of the many, many employers and businesses that that we depend on to accomplish our mission and our goals of our organizations. Do health and safety risks really impact a company's bottom line? Uh, There's a number of ways we could approach this. So absolutely, it, it impacts the bottom line. Um, I think it's important for us, Maureen, to think about from the standpoint of social impact and where companies are thinking or should be thinking today is is not just internally risk, but our impact and duty of care externally facing the environment, uh, socially, sustainability from the standpoint of how how we govern and how we manage. So from a standpoint of social expectations, think of COVID in the past few years and care for the workforce you know, the expansion and focus into mental health and wellness, which which was there and in place and discussed in smaller circles pre-COVID, but really magnified through um, uh, such standards as the the ISO 45003 standard, which is a guidance standard, but helps employers consider um, the impact of of mental and and emotional wellness, especially what we call a vulnerable workforce. When When we talk about supply chain risk management across a contractor network. We're talking about we're relying on other people's employees to help us accomplish work. And we want to think about it holistically across the workforce. So so we think about it in terms of what's the right thing to do? Um, I think Einstein said, I won't quote this word for word, but he said, we can't solve today's problems by the same way we uh, we initially uh, approached them in the first place. And you know, the way we in, many of us initially were trained to think about safety or return on investment and safety is maybe from a compliance standpoint or maybe an insurance standpoint. And we, you know, those are still important things, but we want to be careful with our messaging because um, it really comes down to uh, humans and how we communicate with one another. How do we anticipate risk better um, with one another? Because we have, we have moms and dads We have sons and daughters. We have grandparents in our workforce today. Um, And when today's environment, when we think of um, return on investment, it's much more than just making sure we're compliant. It's much more than just making sure uh, we're reducing things that cost the company money, right? Um, which Which isn't a great message to send to employees. Hey, be safe today so you don't cost us money, right? Not a great message. Um, And so so when we think about uh, companies that are not aware of this, 
are not in step with this, I think they're becoming increasingly invisible to those in the supply chain that are starting to prioritize things. Uh, um, you know, we see questions asked in the RFP process that, that are asking about sustainability and governance, safety management systems, things connected to how we control risk in the supply chain. You know, and I'd, I'd add, look, medical costs continue to increase. Uh, so, I, you know, for you know, the average medically consulted injury last year was $44,000. Um, and, you know, while we see minor and moderate injuries have continued to decrease, we see the category of injuries that, that's most devastating to humanity, most devastating to employees, to communities, and to society, or there's a classification known as serious injuries and fatalities. We're stuck at making improvements in this area. We, we have been uh, in, in the industrial settings uh, just under the 5,000 per year mark in terms of number of fatalities in the U.S. Uh, for quite some time. So when we're thinking about, look, this is maybe initially, these aren't the the incidents that happen all the time, but they're the most devastating and the most costly, attention is rightly being turned towards when we think of return on investment, what's the right thing to do when we talk about our approach to safety? Um, do we wanna go prevent the, all the minor slips and, and falls and, and minor lacerations and cuts? We should do those things, but we need to make sure we're, we're approaching it with an informed environment. How is the work taking place? What are the things most likely to impact or hurt people the most? And do we have the controls in place to make sure they're reliably protecting the workforce? Um, and this can become quite complex when we're talking about, we have one employer that depends on contractors over here to do their HVAC maintenance or their, their dock maintenance. Um, they may have temporary workers in their environment as well. So we don't have just a joint, uh, joint employer environment. We have a a multi-employer environment. And when we think of supply chain risk management and why it's important is because, look, it's really hard to accomplish our goals if only some of us are, you know, uh, you know if, if we're all trying to sing together and sound good and be in harmony, we should all be singing off the same sheet of music, right? But if, if we don't have clear goals on, on look, the, the types of risks we need to control, um, the resources we need, to be able to accomplish our work, the communications and, and data and technology we need to depend on. So I can raise my hand and say, you hired me to do this job, but this is very, very different than what we expected. What do I do, right? So now we're talking about ambiguity. H how do we create environments where we're depending on people to make the best decision with the best information they have at the time. They, they, workers really need better information to impact this area. So when we talk about, again, the return on investment, making an impact and the things and driving down the injuries and, and things that hurt people the most, um, this is a significant area uh, that employers should be paying attention to. And, and I'd add that from a, it's good for everyone, right? We can all agree on the moral imperative. So when we're, when we're looking at just the complex world of, of, you know, leading with the right thing, we really don't, we agree. We don't want people to get hurt. Um, we should be agreeing on what are the risks in our environment that we need to manage. And every one of us has a role to play in terms of uh, ensuring work goes well, work goes safely. And if something's different, um, have I been trained to, to manage that risk? Yes or no. If not, can I raise my hand? Um, because where we ultimately want to get is the, the understanding that um, the most significant risks, when we manage the most significant risks in the workforce, we're addressing so many things simultaneously. The highest duty of care for the workforce, um, preventing things that interrupt production, right? Uh, and, and uh, avoid work spoilage and work stoppage and, and, and uh, higher employee turnover. Um, culturally, it's upsetting to see a teammate or a worker get hurt at work, right? And so we think of the psychosocial impact and risks. And, and there's so many reasons we want to do a really good job at taking care of each other um, as well as the worker. But then we get to the standpoint of what are the things that hurt, um, uh, that, that compete for profit, right? Workers' comp 
is, is often the number two expense right after payroll for many employers, especially in industrial environments. And I'm speaking you know, within, the, within the US uh, especially, uh, it's the number two expense. So when we're able to look at the supply chain from a, a holistic standpoint, we're able to identify the risks we need to manage, enable communication. So what we do is, is call moving the discussions ahead of the injuries so that we can manage risk along the continuum of work. What we see is, well, we capture things that aren't in place and that's okay because we anticipate those things. Um, we're able to uh, reduce the number of actual events that occur. So think of the, the worst of the worst, amputations or crush injuries or falls. Um, again, devastating, but, but very, very expensive. But when we reduce even a small percentage of this type of injury, we significantly reduce the amount an employer has to set aside to anticipate um, what they might be paying on these work-related injuries for years. The finance office, the chief financial officer wants to be able to say, look, specifically, how are we how are we managing our workforce to take better care of them? In fact, we can show, uh, you know, X amount of reduction in the number of serious injuries that have occurred uh, and kind of behind the scenes. What they also see is, um, you know, incurred expenses, not competing for, um, you know, space on the, on the balance sheet, right? So we're, we're able to actually positively impact a company's profitability statement, there's less to report, particularly in the areas of serious injuries. There's less exposure. There's less incurred expense that, that companies have to hold in anticipate, uh, anticipation of, of paying on future claims. That's money they don't have to set aside, right? And that's money that, that can still be held in terms of, you know, where, where would they want to spend that or in, invest that uh, perhaps in future uh, future worker safety efforts. So, which by the way, there's a number of studies that have been done. Liberty Mutual is one of them. For every dollar we invest in safety, there's a, you know, we've heard three dollar, four dollar returns. We, we've heard different ranges. Um, so there's, you know, when we think of return on investment, investing in safety. Uh, sometimes the the easiest way to think about it, it's the moral imperative, absolutely the right thing to do. Um, it's powerfully connected to um, enabling healthy culture, right? And think of the, the amount of time we've spent trying to build healthy cultures, especially with the compression of, of COVID um, uh, in the past few years and the pandemic. Um, but it really does uh, create an environment where, you know, we having fewer injuries, you have fewer business interruptions, you have fewer claims to report, you know, it, in every claim you file, there's a cost to it. And you have to pay to keep lights on, uh, have computers, have people to process the claims. You're, you're managing a smaller piece of work and you're actually uh, re, you know, creating a result where you have a lower risk profile um, for your total, your total workers' compensation spend. So, um, so return on investment is absolutely connected with better safety performance. And as we think about it from a supply chain risk management, um, even if even if I'm an employer inside somebody else's facility and I'm paying for my own workers' comp, I'm paying for my own you know, safety equipment. Uh, if I have an injury in, in a client's facility, does it still negatively impact their work? Absolutely, right? So there's ripple effects in so many different ways, um, but absolutely a strong correlation to, uh, to re return on investment in the most important things when we improve safety. Scott, one way in which Aveda helps companies with risk management is to pre-qualify suppliers. What does that involve and why is it important? Right, so well, what we're doing is we're connecting, uh, we're connecting our customers and the suppliers, the contractors, we're helping them to connect in a way. And, and it starts with, when you think of a pre-qualification as a step one, uh, that's, not, that's not where it stops, but, um, you know, the pre-qualification aspects are, you know, are they, uh, do they have the licensing, licensing, the, the insurance, um, uh, do they uh, have the training they need and, and are these things verified uh, in the pre-qualification process? But ongoing performance goes beyond that. Um, and really what we're trying to do is answer the question, um, can you do what I need you to do when you show up? And how do we stay in touch with those ongoing proficiencies? Uh, so vendors and suppliers can showcase that they know, you know, that they know the things they need to know um, 
and just balance and manage expectations. So for example, from a, a training, um, training to operational standards that are required and providing a customer assurance that the contractors, the suppliers have that training. They can see that they have that training. Um, they're following the workflows. There's, uh, there's opportunity for each of them to give feedback to each other on, on the performance of work. Was it as expected or was there anything different? That's where things begin to connect to, uh, to performance improvement. Um, and beyond that, you know, Quality is important on time. Uh, customers like to see that, that the suppliers have process in place to mitigate hazards and to control risk in, in dynamic environments, uh, working environments. And they're willing to participate in what's important to the customer. Um, communications improvements, uh, feedback, as I mentioned earlier, uh, but the customer is in a position to understand, look, you know, suppliers are asking or needing these types of things in their environment. Maybe they can change their questions or adjust their standards and vice versa for the customer towards the supplier. When we think of, you know, how is Aveta helping companies you know, with risk management and with the pre-qualification, it starts with pre-qualification, but that's certainly not where it ends. Good to know. Now, Aveta has workforce management tools and solutions that help clients better manage risk while on the job site and while the work is being completed. Can you explain how all that works? Yeah, sure. So there's um, workforce management solutions. It, think of it as, as a you know, where do we where do we stay connected um, with each other? So often these days, it's often it's often through a phone, or it's often the the portable tech and data that we can take with us to verify what we think we know. And that's one question we often want to ask: is is work happening like we think it is? Are the people doing the work? Um, are those actually the people doing the work? Have they been trained? How do we verify that when we're out on a work site? And so we think of workforce management as just elegant technology and tools in the hands of, of our customers so that they can um, better support a collection of qualifications, uh, licenses, requirements for scope of services. Um, and it creates tracking and visibility for things like client required training. You know, technology through the Aveta portal as, as a supplier, um, they often have to take very specific trainings. And when they show up, there's QR codes that they can they can uh, pull up on their their data device or similar data devices um, with the pictures with the verifications of the training could be background proof of background it could be um, drug testing but it's right there so it's like this is who was supposed to show up this is who showed up and we verified the training or you know there's a gap right and when we when there's a gap or when there's uh, something different that's potentially uh, a gap in our risk controls. So, uh, so it, it allows us to be able to capture risk again beyond that pre-qualification step for the employers just to stay connected. Now, Scott, there are some key metrics that are tracked. What are they? Right, so keeping track of how many suppliers are, are in your portal, um, being able to perhaps uh, track and sort uh, based on on spend, right? Which, which suppliers are spending what amount and coordinating that with the type of risk that they are doing, uh, creating kind of line of sight and visibility uh, into your supplier base, your supplier network is one, is one important thing. Um, number of trainings that have been completed, right? It could be a simple thing. So when we think of one of, one of the things so important is, is are our people trained, especially in a network of and we may have higher work turnover environments. We have you know, vast uh, array of distributed work environments. And we need to know things like, you know, are trainings completed? Uh, do trainings uh, coincide with the, the amount of work that's being done, compliance status? Uh, and then we look at, at safety metrics. And what I'll say about safety metrics is we can see trailing metrics, such as the, the number of incidents that happened last year. Uh, the number of OSHA recordable injuries that happened last year. And those, those are helpful to describe what happened or how many events happened. Um, and we like to know those things, but we also like to know safety metrics. Again, the num such as number of trainings, um, the number of uh, perhaps risk assessments that have been completed. These are things that we're doing to you know, create assurance, to drive assurance 
um, in an ongoing fashion. Again, managing risk along the continuum of work. And so those metrics are important. Uh, but again, in today's workforce, some of the metrics that are really so important under the, the umbrella of like social, uh, our social environment um, are ESG metrics. So environmental, social governance. Um, and when we think how our, our clients can interface with the supplier network on the things that are important to them. So it could be uh, scope three emissions, greenhouse gases, could be the uh, carbon emitted by suppliers, diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? When they have that visibility and when, when our customers are saying what's important to us um, are these metrics here and, and actually working with like-minded suppliers, like-minded contractors to help us achieve these goals, we're actually helping each other. We're actually actively working together um, to adhere to the same standards, the same process, the same way of thinking, um, the same approach to problem solving, um, you know, naturally correlates to better business performance. So the metrics are, are, um, are good uh, to track these key metrics. They may be a little bit different between customers, um, but it's important to understand that there's some traditional metrics such as the trailing metrics, but certainly the realm of ESG, I think is a much broader umbrella for, for employers to begin exploring. And one last question for you. What kind of results can companies expect from working with Aveta? Sure, yeah, I uh, appreciate the question. So we think of, um, you know, risk changes, risk fluctuates, uh, and it can fluctuate very quickly. So it's important that when we think of managed risk reduction um, along the continuum of, of work, a benefit of working with Aveta is we help employers do that. We help create line of sight into what's happening across their entire supply chain and help them stay connected to, like we just talked about, the performance standards, um, you know, the feedback loops created within our Aveta One system to allow uh, continual improvement, right? Um, when, we, when we identify change or we identify an, an opportunity for improvement, we, we, uh, we centralize data, right? Around our Aveta One platform, it captures risk across all these areas of supply chain. Uh, men mentioning ESG earlier, there, there's a lot of different types of risks just within your environmental, just within your social, just within your governance circles. Um, and the Aveta One platform can help keep all those and consolidate those. So from a standpoint of, we, we want to know what's happening today, but we want our systems to mature. We want them to to grow. So from creating a baseline, the Aveta One platform creates a baseline. So we know where we are today. How do we benchmark against uh, others, um, you know, our peers? And, and how do we use the data we're capturing to create a sense of continual improvement, right? How do we, how do we strategize moving forward? How do we continually learn from what we think is, is happening today to, to what we need to be doing perhaps next year? And we talk about continual pr improvement it's really important that, that customers and contractors, the, the suppliers are working together, that there's a strategy together um, in terms of you know, being, a, being able to elevate the voice of those that may be doing the work in the field as much as clarify and, and eliminate ambiguity from the customer side. So our, our better one story simply is, you know, how are we looking at risk indicators to um, recognize the resources and boundaries needed to manage work safely? across a very dynamic and complex network of employers um, while becoming better informed um, about when boundaries are exceeded. All right? Sometimes we pass a boundary and, and failure doesn't necessarily occur, but it could next time. We wanna create a healthy enough network where um, people are not afraid to speak up. People are not afraid to bring forward, hey, this was a miss or this is an opportunity. Um, and it's uh, probably, I think one of the, the hidden but better attributes of the Aveta One platform, it allows people to come together for continual improvement. Well said. Once again, we've been talking with Scott DeBoe. Scott is the Principal Advisor of Health, Safety, and Environmental for Aveta. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much, Maureen. Have a great day. You too. For more information, just go to aveta.com, and that is spelled A-V-E-T-T-A.com.